something I was proud to. This cycle is, is repeated and dangerous acts of violence as a cyclical pattern. You know, it's, it's high emotions and doctrines of retribution and revenge. The pattern, the cycle, it repeats. And it can happen many times during one relationship. And each phase may last a different length of time. But over time, the level of violence and abuse will increase. It, uh, it usually stems from childhood and learned behaviors, and then it just repeats as an adult. Therefore, you're, you're continuing the cycle. abuse and it's designed to control and oppress their victim. Then there's guilt when the person feels guilty for inflicting abusive behavior, you know, primarily out of concern of being found out guilty rather than having feelings of sympathy for the person. Then there's um, excuses, you know, rationalizing of the behavior, including blame and excuses, and then normal behavior, they regain personal control and they create this peaceful phase in an attempt to make the other person feel comfortable again in the relationship. And then it goes back into this illusion, fantasy, and planning stage, um, you know, they think about what they did wrong and how they will be punished and then develop a plan to just like realize this fantasy. Then it's like this setup phase, the plan is put into motion. And the cyclical nature of domestic violence is, is, um, it's like intimate terrorism. It's just involves a pattern of ongoing control using emotional, physical, and other forms of abuse, which generally leads, you know, victims or usually women and that's the traditional sense of domestic violence and uh, it it's to illustrate the different interrelated forms of abuse it's um, different from situational couple violence and then there's like isolated incidents of of varying degrees of intensity, but a, a general intricate and complicated cycle of traumatic violence is a very to domestic violence are likely to develop behavioral problems, regressing, uh, exhibiting out-of-control behavior, imitating behaviors. They'll think that, that uh, violence or abuse is acceptable in intimate relationships and then either become the abused or the abuser. It can cause a lot of um, 
PTSD, uh, disassociation, and just related things. And this this affects every facet of your life. I mean, domestic abuse and violence and, and the patterns affect your, your mind, your body, your faith, your finances, your everything. 80% um, I'm pretty sure of that like affects your jobs and definitely 100% your well-being as a person. So uh, they had, I think it was back in the 1970s, they started a, a, a social cycle theory called the cycle of abuse and it explained patterns of behavior in abusive relationships. The phase is used more generally to describe conditions which perpetuate abusive and dysfunctional relationships, you know, such as poor child rearing practices, which tend to get passed down. And, um, you know, they describe the cycling patterns of, of calm, violence, reconciliation within an abusive relationship. And they say, like, the main four phases of the cycle of abuse is, um, it's described as the controlling patriarchal behavior of men who feel entitled to abuse their wives to maintain control over them. And it's also called the battering cycle or uh, battered women syndrome. But terms like cycle of abuse have been instead used for, you know, different reasons, just to main objectivity, because the cycle of abuse doesn't always lead to physical abuse. And because symptoms of the syndrome have been observed in men and women, and it's not confined to marriage and dating. Now, with the phases, the cycles will usually follow a particular order. They'll repeat until the conflict is stopped, usually by the survivor entirely abandoning the relationship or some sort of intervention. And the cycle can occur, you know, hundreds of times in an abusive relationship, and the total cycle taking anywhere from a few hours to years to complete. Now, the length of the cycle usually diminishes over time so that the reconciliation and the calm stages like end up disappearing and the violence and intense emotional cycles become more frequent. Usually the first stage is called tension building. The stress builds up from the pressures of, of daily life, conflict over children, marital issues, misunderstandings, miscommunication, and just really other conflicts in our life. And it, it builds as the result of illness, of legal or financial problems, unemployment, catastrophic events, you know, floods, war, really anything. During this period, the, the abuser feels and uh, it can last for months. And to prevent violence, the victim may try to reduce the tension by becoming compliant and nurturing. And alternatively, they may provoke the abuser to just get the abuse over with and prepare for the violence or lessen the degree of the injury. Now, however, the abuser is never justified in engaging in violent or abusive behavior. And then you have number two of the cycle. 
During this stage, the abuser attempts to dominate their victim. Uh, outbursts, angry outbursts, violence, and the abuse uh, can include, you know, verbal, psychological abuse in an in intimate uh, partner violence. Children are negatively affected by having witnessed it, and the partner's relationship degrades as well. And the release of energy reduces the tension, and the abuser may feel or express to them, you know, like they had it coming, this is what you wanted, things like that. Then there's like the third phase, which is reconciliation, and the perpetrator may begin to feel remorseful, uh, have guilty feelings, or fear that their partner will leave or call the police. And the partner, the victim, feels pain, fear, humiliation, disrespect, confusion, and, and mistakenly feel responsible and categorize by affection, apology, alternatively ignoring the incident, and this phase marks an apparent end of the cycle with assurances that, it, you know, it'll never happen again, or they'll do their best to change, or during this stage that the abuser may feel or claim to feel overwhelming remorse and sadness. Some walk away from the situation with little comment, but most will eventually shower the survivor with love and affection, also called love bombing. Now, the abuser may use self-harm or threats of suicide to gain sympathy or prevent the person from leaving the relationship. And this is just a tactic and the abusers are frequently so convincing sometimes and the survivors are so eager for the relationship to improve that the survivors who are often worn out and confused by the long-standing abuse just stay in the relationship as again what they really wanted was for them to love them and so now that they're getting that, they're like, oh, well, everything's going to be okay. It's not. It's not going to be okay. It is just a phase, literally. <clears throat> so then we have the calm phase. And during that, which is often called the honeymoon reconciliation phase, the relationship is relatively calm and peaceful. And during this period, um, the abuser may agree to engage in like counseling, ask for forgiveness, create a normal atmosphere. Um, they may buy presents or they may, you know, have really great passionate sex. But over time, the, the abuser's apologies and requests for forgiveness become less sincere and are just generally stated to prevent the separation or intervention. Now, interpersonal difficulties will inevitably arise, leading to the tension building phase. And, um, the effect of the continual cycle may include um, loss of love, contempt, distress, and physical disability. And they may separate, divorce, or at the extreme, someone may be killed. Now, this this cycle of abuse theory was pretty much regarded as an, an important concept, um, and is and is a large model of the domestic violence programs in the U.S. Now, there are many other uh, theories developed of of like fourteen stage cycles that are like really broken down in the specific phases, like the tension building, the acting out, calm stages, 
Like, for instance, there's like six stages of escalation or, or the tension building stage that lead up to the incident by acting out uh, their revenge plan, self-destructive behavior, uh, grooming, and the actual physical, emotional, or sexual assault. And then this is followed by a sense of relief, fear of consequences, distraction, and then rationalization of the abuse. I have been in um, many, many uh, domestic violence situations. Uh, one with family, uh, definitely with relationships, and it's like no matter how hard I try to get away from that and just have like a normal, happy, stable, secure relationship with anyone, you know, it, it, it just turns into that way, no matter how good it is at first. And um, I'm really trying to break that cycle and I'm, I'm trying to just be alone with myself. And people don't like that. People don't like that you want to be alone and, and heal and just be with yourself. They always have to make an excuse for it. Or, um, you know, they'll be like, you're leaving me for someone else. Or... Um, have fun with your new boyfriend or whatever they want to rationalize in their mind. They don't get that their behavior directly influenced how this went. And it, it, it's the actions and reactions of everything. And now I just don't even react. I just walk away. I just give up because there's no point in in arguing or fighting about the situation like you you know your truth and that is the most important thing to remember to to live in your truth be your truth and not accept anything less than that so if you have been in or are in a very abusive, toxic situation. Please seek help from an outside source. Uh, contact a shelter if need be. Go with family, a counselor, a therapist. Uh, you can call 211 from literally anywhere in the U.S. and they will, will put you in line to find something to help you. You can go to AuntBertha.com and find assistance programs. Domestic violence is a huge issue in this world. And um, we got to figure out how to stop the cycle. And it starts you and it stops with you. My prayers and thoughts go out to you. everyone who has been through this in their life. It is, it is a very difficult situation. And, uh, if you ever want to talk with me personally about your experiences, please feel free. Another rough path, but we're gonna get through this.